What's up everybody? Today I'm taking a look at a biometric safe from a company called Langer. Now if you're familiar with these kind of safes, you probably know that a lot of them are really similar. They probably come from, you know, manufacturers that sell bulk components and then somebody just assembles them and that's really the key point right there is that whoever ends up assembling these things is really where the quality control comes from. But without making any real assumptions, let's just take a look at what we have here. So first and foremost, one of the main criticisms that these little safes get is the fact that it's relatively thin steel and it should be easy enough to just, uh, you know, rip it right out of the wall and bash it apart to get the gun. And that is absolutely true. So if that's your main concern, I would say just go ahead and skip this, spend the extra money, it's gonna be quite a bit extra money, and you know get something that's more secure. Keeping in mind that I used to work for a locksmith, and one thing that he really drove home for me was uh, a saying that I guess that they all say is that locks are for honest people. And that's 100% true. If somebody wants something, they're gonna get something. So realistically what we're doing is we're trying to slow them down. You know, the having something like this is more for, I would consider a lockbox. You're trying to keep children out of it. You're trying to keep, you know, prying eyes you have guests over and people get touchy-feely with your stuff you know it's you don't want them doing that with your firearm but it's not something I consider you know crime proof uh, if anything you're just slowing them down and realistically that is the goal so as far as build quality goes I'd say it's pretty much as expected and quality control for the build seems to also be very good it's powered by USB and also has a battery backup just in case either a power outage or maybe the USB fails and then lastly just in case all the electronics fail it also comes with a key and you can open it from the bottom now you should notice that the mounting bracket being positioned where it is uh, is switchable to both sides but it's made to be mounted underneath of a desk basically you can take this mounting bracket off and just screw through the side into the desk if you'd like that's the way that they have it advertised on their website and to mount it it comes with these little screws but honestly so you're going to want to get something a little bit bigger. Um, again, the goal is not to be tamper proof, but we don't want to make it easy for them either. Definitely get some bigger screws or some lag bolts if you can. Some way to you know bolt it clean through whatever it is that you're mounting it to. But for most people, just bigger screws should do fine. Now, as mentioned, this is a biometric safe. So with the touch of the keypad, it opens right up. And then additionally, you can also use the code. You set a code and again, opens right up. Now, I can immediately hear the comments and the arguments saying, I don't want to trust a biometric safe. I don't want to trust anything electronic, really, with my firearm. In case I need it, those electronics could fail. And you're right. So if those are the reasons why you don't want it, I would say just don't get it. It's not for you. But my argument to that would be, you know, your car has electronics in it, and you drive it 70 miles an hour going down the highway, so where exactly do we draw the line with electronics? All right, well, it's a major manufacturer. They have better quality control. Have you seen the quality control of most of these car manufacturers? I mean, it's clear that they're putting, you know, dirt cheap components in these cars. So for me, it's not the fact that it's electronic. It's what are the fail safe? What are the redundancies? And what are the likelihoods that in the event that I need it, it will fail? So then again, playing devil's advocate, the argument would be, well, cheap, you know, overseas components. Of course, it's going to fail. And again, coming back to the car argument, <laughs> cheap overseas components so you know it's really just about putting things into perspective and for me I don't care if something costs 85 cents or 85 dollars if it's good it's good I'm gonna use it so that brings us to the mechanism itself and here's where things kind of get a little bit you know depends on what exactly you're looking for so a few things that became noticeable right away it does register keypad inputs very quickly the audible beep of the keypad press doesn't quite keep up with its ability to register the fact that the button has been pressed. So what that means is in a hurry, you can type your code in real fast and it should open up just fine. But I would argue that in an emergency situation, you should be calm enough to press your code in, uh, you know, relatively not slowly, but controlled so that you don't accidentally have, you know, a slipped button push or something to that extent where it locks you out and you have to re-enter your code. The way that the majority of these keypads, they handle wrong codes is they give you an audible indication, usually a couple beeps, and then they'll reset. But that takes time. So it kind of comes down to training to access your firearm is almost as important as training to use your firearm. Getting a good press on those buttons, you know, to help ensure that it opens up properly and you don't have to wait for that reset in a time of need. And for a lot of people, I can understand that reset time is actually a deal breaker. And if you don't have kids and you don't have the issue with people potentially accessing your firearm that you don't want to, that you know, I understand how that could be a deal breaker, but that again just sort of circles back to my original point of just practicing with your equipment and familiarizing yourself with your equipment. So that's for button pushes, but what about the biometric part? Because realistically, that's what most people are buying this for. And that's where things kind of get interesting. It can hold up to 20 fingerprints, and it recommends that you scan the same finger three times. That means that multiple people can use it, 
or you can use multiple fingers to be able to access the safe. Now I had an opportunity to spend some time with this and my experience is that you're gonna wanna do it a lot more than three times. So if this is the kind of thing that you want the entire family to be able to access, you got a family of five, I could see this being problematic. And that's not because it won't work, it certainly will, it actually does a pretty good job. But in an emergency, you won't necessarily always be pressing your finger in the exact same way every single time. And again, they give pretty good instructions on this. They tell you to roll your finger, they tell you how to place it to get the best scan. But unfortunately, I just found that that wasn't sufficient. I did mine over and over and over, and when I got to about the eighth or ninth uh, you know, iteration of scanning my thumb, I had finally reached the point where regardless of how I place my thumb on here, it's gonna open up. And that's really the goal, because again, in the emergency situation, I just wanna be able to grab it and have it work. So for me, it's not a huge deal. But again, if you have a big family and you want everybody to be able to access it, that could potentially be a problem. But I'm the only person that accesses my firearm. So in the event that I did end up wanting to add somebody later down the road, you know, I've got 10 to 12, you know, extra allotted slots. So overall, what do I think? And honestly, I think overall, it's a fantastic little safe that fits its niche very well. Your expectation when you buy something, it's always going to be the determining factor of whether or not you're happy. You know, you're not going to purchase this and beat it up with a sledgehammer and expect it to survive. But if you're looking for a lockbox to keep under your desk and use your thumb to access your firearm when you need it and have it be reliable, this is that. It is very reliable. It has um, done its job. I just had to, you know, add a couple extra fingerprints for it to get to that reliable point. Uh, but that's okay. I don't really consider that a negative. Maybe they can update their, um, you know, their instructions a little bit. But as far as function goes, I'm going high. I'm going to say five stars. And that's still regardless of having to scan my fingerprint multiple times because to get my concealed carry permit in my state, I had to get my fingerprints done and even that machine took a few times and I can't imagine that thing was cheap. So, you know, what exactly are we comparing here? You know, at this price, it's very affordable and it seems to work and work very well. There's no frills. There's no extras. It's like the Honda Civic of gun safes. So they went in that area. But the next thing I want to check is fitment, because it's important how my handgun fits inside of here. And the first thing that I noticed about the inside is that the foam um, is not that typical kind of pull and pluck soft foam. It's like, uh, this is more of a solid kind of foam. It's, it's nicer. I like this better. But it is a good bit stiffer. And I noticed right away, because my home defense firearm is my Glock 45, and I have a TLR7A uh, streamlight on it. And it's definitely a snug fit. Um, you, it's so snug, in fact, the first time I put it in there, you can kind of hear some tearing, but it's not really tearing, it's kind of just that foamy kind of sound of it being brushed up against and, and pulled. Um, but it's definitely to the point where, depending on the width, there's certain firearms that are going to have difficulty kind of squeezing in there if they have a light on them. So for example, little Taurus G2C, got an Olight PL Mini 3 on here, and it's not fitting in here unless I really force it. And then additionally, I've got my carry gun, my Hellcat Pro. I don't have a light on here, and it's a really thin gun, so we're really not grabbing the sides of it at all when we stick it in here. What's happening is it's actually pulling on the trigger guard, giving it just enough retention to stay in place. So in both cases, it's going to stay in place and it's going to fit. But what we're essentially doing is we're molding it to the firearm that we're placing in there. And while it certainly wouldn't be difficult to get a different gun in here down the road if we decided to, it's almost as if this is giving us an opportunity for a custom fit, kind of. Um, and it should fit very well from that point forward. Something that I might recommend is potentially warming it up a little bit prior to sticking your, your firearm in there. Maybe um, not heat it up. I wouldn't stick a heat gun and really blast it, but just warm it up just a little bit. Place your firearm in there and let it really rest and take the shape of that gun. It also has a spot for a spare magazine, which again, same kind of thing there, just sort of depends on the size of your mag, if it fits perfectly or not. Um, but we're not going to be hanging this thing upside down, right? It just needs to hold it in there and then feed it to us. So again, I would put this on my highly recommended. You know, if you're looking for luxury, you're probably looking in the wrong spot, but overall it does its job and it does its job well. If you've owned one of these, make sure to let people know what your experience was in the comments. I've always found that super helpful when I'm shopping for stuff to read through the comments, so you know the routine. If you got value out of this, make sure to like and follow, and as always, stay safe my friends.